All right, in the last part, I showed how we could take a data frame, get its covariance matrix, and then break that covariance matrix into three parts. And if we wanted to, we can multiply those three parts together to get back to the covariance matrix. Uh, but what was cool is that we could look at the relative magnitudes of the eigenvalues and see that most of the information was captured in just two dimensions of the data, which kind of matches our intuition. And because of that, instead of having to use all of these three parts to reproduce the covariance matrix, we saw that we could use two of the five dimensions, right? We could take these slices that are just kind of grabbing 40% of the data and we could still reproduce uh, the original, right? With relatively little loss. Okay, so we've seen we can reduce a covariance matrix, reduce the number of uh, dimensions, and then flate it back without losing much information, right? Because underlying, there's not many dimensions of this data. Uh, now that's okay, but uh, the covariance matrix is kind of small anyway. Why is that an interesting thing to do? A much cooler thing to do is if we can shrink back our original uh, table, and then inflate that back, right? Can we take our original uh, data that has, I don't know, 50 or 100 rows, uh, kind of shrink it down to just two columns instead of five, and then recover uh, the original? And uh, the answer is yes, absolutely we can. So let's do that. So uh, the, the formulas here are that, uh, first off, well, before I get to the formulas, this is only going to work on data that is centered, right? Where the average is a zero in each column, right? So I'm going to take data frame minus the mean, right? So that's the reconstruction. And, and that, that's fine, of course, right? Because if I have um, this zeroed thing and I have the means, um, I, could, I could get back to data frame from this, right? So maybe I'm just going to, maybe I'm going to strip with this in a, in a variable, right? Just to make it very clear, right? So this is the means. Okay, and uh, let me just take a peek at that that thing. Okay, that head, I mean, I'll look at the first three rows. Okay, so I can uh, reduce this to just something with two columns that still captures all of the all of the information. And uh, and the way I do that is that I multiply it by those eigen values that we had. Right, so I can do something like this. I can say uh, data frame of zero at, and um, and it's going to be the same piece, right? This these eigenvalues. I guess uh, it depends on how many I want here. I guess I just have two, right? So I can do it that, and um, I have to stand them up vertically uh, to do that. But I can multiply those things together, and instead of having instead of having five columns, I reduce down to these. Uh, two columns, and, and these two columns might not have um, uh, intuitive meaning anymore, right? Uh, so what we'll typically call them are principal components, right? Because these are kind of these artificial dimensions that capture everything we need to know about the original. So, so maybe what I'll do is uh, say these are my principal components. Actually, yeah, I'll do it like this. Um, you know what? I'm just going to do it like this so I can kind of... Uh, uh, I'm going to work with um, that NumPy array, which is going to let me reconstruct it like this. It's going to be, um, here, let me put that to an array. And then I'm going to say pd.data frame array. Uh, that's kind of where I was, right? That should be the same thing. But the advantage now is now I can actually specify some columns. So the columns are going to be, um, you know, I want it to be like PC1, PC2, so on and so forth. Uh, the way I'm going to do that is like this. I'm going to say um, like that dot format, and then i plus one for i in range of of what? I guess the second dimension, which is how many columns there are. Right. So just like that, um, and hopefully that works. And um, and so we have principal component one and principal component two. These are two made up variables that capture all of the variants that we really, we really care about, right? So we've kind of shrunk down this table. Uh, now, how do we know that we didn't lose some information when we did that? Let me just put this in here. Uh, how do we know we didn't lose some information when we kind of shrunk down from five columns 
to just uh, a three. And we can prove we did it by kind of reconstructing the original data uh, from, from this PC, right? And, and so what do we do? I guess we shrunk it down by we multiplied um, these values by, by the top however many eigenvectors. In this case, we multiply the two eigenvectors. And we can actually do the same thing uh, to convert it back, right? So I'm gonna say uh, PC, that values, and I'm gonna multiply it by this thing. And this time when we're going back, we don't transpose. Right? I'm gonna do that. And um, and uh, and well, what is this thing? Well, this is, uh, uh, let me put in a data frame. So this is really data frame zero uh, reconstructed. We need that data frame. And, uh, and well, let me put the column names there. So columns are gonna be the same thing uh, that I had before, well, whatever the original columns are. And um, I guess it's more interesting if I actually show what's in there. And um, if I get back to this, I have some negative values in there. Why is that? Well, because I'm kind of undoing what I did before, right? First, I went from a data frame to a center data frame, and then I converted that to these two principal components. Now I'm unwinding, right? I show that I can do this multiplication here to get back to the df0 right but to actually get back to the data frame i have to add in the means again right so i head back down here and uh, and just do that and what should be true and maybe if i just look at the head of this i can show it's true is that is that what i can look at my original and it should be very similar values, right? You see they're a little bit different, right? 6.4 instead of 6, uh, 37.3 instead of 38. Uh, but it's impressive, right, that I was able to shrink down to just two columns and uh, that kind of captured most of the information. And then I was able to reconstruct with, you know, a little bit of loss, uh, the, original, the original data. Okay, so now why would you want to do this? Um, Maybe the most obvious application is that uh, your matrices are huge, right? And there's a bunch of redundant information in them. And so maybe you save some space by having, having these smaller uh, matrices. The other reason though, is when we're doing a regression or other machine learning techniques, a lot of those tools don't work well when there are a lot of dimensions. So what you'll often do is you'll do a pre-processing step. You'll reduce the data down to the principal components, which are gonna usually be a lot fewer than in your original data. And, uh, and then um, you can do the analysis on that, right? I could do an, uh, a linear regression on these uh, if I wanted to. Right? So those are two applications, right? We kind of can save space. Um, it's gonna be a good pre-processing step for some machine learning things. And then third, it's just useful um, to kind of know how much uh, variance there is in our original data, right? It's kind of interesting to know that there's a lot of redundancy here, right? Most of the variance is captured uh, in just two uh, columns, right? So this is an extremely popular kind of machine learning pre-processing technique.